Ahoy Captain and welcome to another episode of First Aid for a Sustainable Ship. And in this episode we'll have a look into a large fishing trawler in which we will apply not one, not two, but three different technologies. That's right, it's going to be a big mix of technologies that we'll look into detail in two. Uh, it's gonna be fun and oh boy, it's gonna be a lot as well. But uh, hopefully you'll learn about all these three different technologies and how they could apply to a large fishing trawler. And you're especially lucky if you coincidentally happen to own such a fishing trawler and you need to decarbonize. So let's dive into the case study we call Jacobus Maria. That's how we call the vessel itself. We'll see about 20% CO2 reduction, although we see while well, we apply 20% CO2 reduction in particular with the biofuels that we use. The total amount of capex investments will be around a million, a little bit above, and that's mostly because of the battery hybrid system. And of that, it's mostly the battery pack itself. And we see a payback rate in, uh, in columns because uh, we have cheated a little on the carbon tax. But uh, you'll see that in the uh, tooling section and also the reporting section, of course. Because there are two parts to this video. Uh, first, we have the online tool with input and assumptions, and that's where we can change a lot of what we do. So you could maybe make it work if you have a different operational profile, etc. And then secondly, we have the premium report and some of the results and discussion, in particular the CAPEX breakdown in the end. That being said, a uh, short disclaimer in advance, the decarbonizer itself is only a model. We uh, do assume quite a lot and not everything that we do is correct because, well, we don't have your vessel at the moment. So this is more of a generalization of fishing trawlers in general, of all we know. Secondly, it's constantly evolving. So if you see a different version in the decarbonizer that's currently online in this video, that's because it's changing and continuously being updated. It's also made by humans, by me, a bold guy in a blue suit. So uh, we make some small errors here and there. We do try to improve upon them as well and not make them in the first place, but please bear with us. And again, this is first aid. We do not do intensive cardio surgery here. We simply uh, make estimates based on, well, a lot of us. And then finally, uh, we are independent, so we do not receive any money from suppliers or others, other type of people, otherwise other than uh, ship owners like yourself who pay for these kinds of uh, consultancy. That being said, let's dive into the first part, the tool itself. For those of you who are not on sustainable ships uh, watching this movie, here you see the URL in order to go to the decarbonizer. If you're on the website, simply click on decarbonizer at the top of your screen and get going. So here we have our latest version of the decarbonizer at the time of recording this video. Don't worry if yours looks a bit different and we're continuously updating as I stated before. And we're gonna go for the Jacob Maria as stated. Uh, so we're not using a tanker, but we're gonna go for a fishing vessel. And I'll be honest, um, fishing vessels are all the way here at the bottom, not for any particular reason, uh, but I've only done once in my life. And it was actually a vessel, a fishing, former fishing vessel being transformed to a offshore support vessel or guarding vessel. So uh, my experience is limited. Then again, uh, my experience on other types of vessels similar are is a bit more uh, extended. So we're gonna go for a regular fishing vessel. Um, well, in this case, the Jacob Maria is more, more of a trawler actually. Uh, so if you don't know which one to choose, simply pick the main type. And if you know a little bit more about your vessel, then you can go for either trawler or uh, for instance, fix, fish factory vessel. Um, the Jacob Maria is a little bit in between with some capacity to carry fish and also ice them, but we're gonna go for trawler in this case, just for the fun of it. So uh, five steps uh, are required for the decarbonizer. Ship data, step one, regulation, step two, uh, CO2 measures, step three, and then we have CAPEX, NOPEX, all the economics. And then finally, we end with uh, step five, entering email and getting the premium reporting. So we're first gonna go for ship data. Most important uh, in order to get a good estimate is of course our representative daily power demand. And for these types of vessels, I know that for a lot of time they are moored. So uh, almost half the time they are moored in harbor. So this is the representative daily power demand, but we extrapolate it for over the entire year. So uh, it's a bit of both. Uh, we're sailing uh, a little bit, like let's say uh, one, one and a half hours each day. Well, it depends. Uh, yeah. 
to be honest i can't be certain unless i'm sitting here with you someone who could uh ship owner who knows uh, what they're doing but i'm gonna go for um let's see i'm gonna split them up so that we have about 40 percent sailing more a bit more there we go 145 days and then we have a little bit less days of sailing well this uh, by the way doesn't really matter at all so here we go sailing 40 40 roughly speaking and what is working mode working is neither sailing nor idle moored uh working is in this case dragging your nets behind the vessel and occasionally uh getting them snared or having a bit higher peak load we'll change those later so what we'll normally do is we'll sit down and we'll make sure that these the different operational profiles concur to your operational profiles, uh, mostly the uh, fuel consumption in volumes per day in this case. And then we also uh, see what they are per year. And then that when they concur roughly, then we know that we're roughly in the right order of magnitude with your operational profile and thus also the OPEX cost. Ship and fuel parameters is second, so we're going to fill in Jacob Maria as our vessel. Uh, here we go, caps lock on. <laughs> Jacobus Maria! Jacob Maria, just a regular, normal type Maria. Uh, trawler, uh, installed power, about a megawatt of installed power and about 100 kilowatts of auxiliary power for a port. We're going to change HFO to MDO, regular diesel, with yeah, 780 cubic meters. Uh, it's probably not gonna pay any ETS, ETS cost for the foreseeable moment, but I do foresee it at some point in time. So we're gonna leave it at 85 euros per cubic meter, per cubic meter, per tons of CO2 emitted. And we're gonna change that later, see how that uh, changes our outcome as well. Operational profile and power. So this is very important because this is most likely not the operational profile that you have with the shipping uh, fishing vessel. Uh, I'm going to lower the uh, amount of power required to sail and I'm going to increase the amount of power to required uh, when dragging, uh, when trawling. So this one I'm going to change to 500, roughly half. I'm going to change this to, let's say, 650, a little bit more, no, 780, nice and even. And uh, we have a few times an hour that the uh, netting is snagged or whatever, a little bit higher uh, trawling power required. Here, this is quite coarse the time resolution here uh, in the uh, back end so once we enter email and hit PDF button we'll get a, a lot more detail on our power profile but for now we're just gonna leave it as is as you can see we can simply change it around when we're uh, sitting together and you can uh, customize the power profile to what you need and I'm also gonna change the uh, specific fuel consumption a little bit because we have yeah I'm gonna go for 180 uh, grams per kilowatt hours on average um, as you saw i'm increasing i'm decreasing efficiency by increasing the specific fuel consumption curve so we're gonna increase the amount of consumption of fuel that we have uh, for these types of vessels it's usually around 180 grams per kilowatt hours uh, but then again this is exactly one of the things that we need from you in order to get a very good estimate that's it for the first step we have inputted everything that we can on ship data now we're going to go to regulations and good thing for you, fishing is exempt from a lot of regulations in terms of, well, sustainability. Uh, I know for a fact that fishing has a lot of, may, maybe even the most amount of regulations, but uh, in terms of sustainability, a lot of uh, fishing vessel classes are exempt. Uh, that includes the timelines that we see here. I know that for the time being, uh, you're exempt from fuel EU maritime. Uh, that applies to IMO as well in most cases. Um, then again, this is just an indication of what ifs. I mean, um, we'll see further on that if we look at ports and local authorities, those impact fishing vessels probably more than anything else. Uh, they also have quite some strict, uh, strict regulations. But here we can play around with our CO2 target and I'm gonna increase it a little bit at around, uh, let's say, uh, no, a little bit, around 18%, 19% roughly. Uh, I have my reasons to do so. And here we can also add more um, timelines if needed so we can get more of an estimate on what our energy majors are doing even though that probably bothers don't doesn't bother you at all and here some uh, some shipping companies uh, costco etc uh, but what you do see here is that uh, most of the lines are sort of converging and that gives us a very nice indication of how much co2 you need to reduce as you 
further <laughs> move yourself towards the future yeah, if you go ahead in the future so if your vessel is still around around 2030 you can uh, well you can bet about 20 percent of carbon reduction required even though again for fishing vessels a lot of them are, are exempt for these uh, types of um, regulations that include CRI and EXI those are not applicable to your vessel at the moment and if we go to all identified rules and regulations we have a lot over here um, only in Europe uh, if we go to global and all organizations then probably yeah uh, due to the fact that again this is a fishing vessel type uh, mostly only uh, ports and uh, energy majors here are included and of course the uh, eco zones but that's about it um, going back to Europe and let's say I wanted to show ports as well because these probably impact your vessel more than anything else ports do uh, incur quite some local um, regulations and as you can see even though at the moment they might not really be looking into you uh, almost all the big ports have uh, the dream to become carbon neutral even though that again might not apply to you still uh, this is what it's going to go to and uh, a nice feature that we have put in now is that you can simply click on the port itself and go to uh, that particular port. So if you have uh, any questions about that port or you want to dive into it, then uh, feel free to do so here. Bottom line, much of it doesn't apply to you. We're still going to go for 19% carbon reduction for fun. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's done in step three, CO2 measures. So here we have a table with all the CO2 reduction measures currently in the decarbonizer. You can see that a few of them are already blocked out because these do not apply to fishing vessels at the moment. So less to choose from, but still we can uh, play around with what we want. And judging here, if we need about 20% of carbon reduction, uh, 90%, we either need to combine a few measures or go for a very big change fuel here. Now, I stated in the beginning, we're going to go for shore power in the very least. I'm pretty sure that's going to be obliged. And then we also do a battery hybrid for the fun of it. There we go. Even though these are quite expensive, especially if I look at here at the uh, amount of uh, 1 million. Now, I probably wouldn't want to pay that for uh, this type of uh, carbon reduction, but I'll show you later where it comes from. And then we're going to go with uh, biofuels. And that's uh, pretty nice because with biofuels, um, we can reduce the amount of reduction here so just so top it off to the amount needed and as you can see the day rates are included as well um, we do save some money for shore power even though it's quite expensive and for battery hybrid and biofuels we're probably going to incur extra cost uh, on our day rate this is also a new feature we include design refit and class cost if you click on this you'll see that uh, the costs are greatly increased why is that because uh, these are only equipment costs if we uh, block them out it's hard to really state what uh, your requirements will be without knowing what you want so usually we leave the uh, uh, design and refit costs out but in the report you will find some more information on them and then you can make your own business case accordingly so for now moving from top to bottom shore power battery hybrid and biofuels first off shore power here you see uh, some nice pictures, uh, but mostly the table of all the assumptions that we use in terms of electricity consumption, the amount of power required, etc. Most important here is the rated power. I think we can go to 50 kilowatts of rated power. Does that impact much? No, it doesn't really impact much uh, on our business case, but mostly because we have assumed no equipment, auxiliary equipment is required. If we need an additional switchboard and maybe even a transformer to transform the power coming ashore, then you'll notice that yeah that saves quite a lot of money if we go for a smaller type of equipment and if we go changing the electricity uh, pricing let's go for uh, yeah, I was gonna I always want to go low but you see the day rate uh, improving of course if we uh, reduce the electricity price here so this you can use to play around with um, in order to get a better estimate of uh, the shore power case for yourself and these pictures they also uh, provide more information on uh, some of the um, background of each technology so this one's about plugs as you can see for shore power this is uh, an additional story uh, that i was involved with myself building a very large uh, shore power project that's a bit bigger than a fishing vessel 
But here you can simply uh, get more information on the technology and change it around uh, whatever you want. The same applies to battery hybrid and that one is a bit more uh, specific because uh, battery hybrid at the moment we incur only for working mode as a spinning reserve uh, type. Uh, what does it mean? Here you go. Uh, it's quite a big battery that we need for this fishing vessel. Um, actually here the red line is the um, generator that's on and here in the blue line we have the um, uh, state of charge of the battery and what you see is that the generator uh, both charges the vessel and um, the battery at the same time once the battery is full in this case 80 percent that's uh, roughly what we aim for uh, then the battery provides all the power and once the battery is emptied then the generator kicks in but because we have such a high base load of power in this case um, it's very expensive to build such a battery what we can do for example and this is uh, very interesting for working vessels that uh, do not have that have a very low power demand so let's say this becomes 350 there we go going back to co2 measures then we'll see that the uh, we need uh, a lot less of uh, generated time and we can um, very easily use uh, well the amount of time that the battery provides power is increased and i think we can also see yeah there we go plus zero well at least we have some benefits of the uh, hybrid mode itself the reason why this is so expensive is because for what do we have here one megawatt uh, two megawatt estimated battery capacity well, that's quite a lot but it's at least what you want um if we change the cell costs to for example 400 decrease them a little that's that's where most of the uh, money goes to. So for such a system, it's just an immense amount of capex. And in a lot of cases, uh, it will not provide you what you want. But we can, of course, uh, combine this with uh, shore power. In the case of a battery hybrid system, perhaps we can actually just simply remove the shore power connection altogether and then use the battery hybrid system uh, during the day uh, in order to stay moored you uh, only use the electricity coming from the uh, battery pack itself and then uh, don't not doing anything at all in terms of shore power that's a uh, shore battery that's how we usually call it and in the future we'll dive into it uh, more deeply um yeah but we're gonna change this back to 700 so let's get a proper estimate of the entire vessel itself there we go just know that we can play around here and here we have again more information on um, battery hybrid system this is actually coming really close to what you would need in order to get two megawatts of power that's roughly well, nowadays you can get it into a 20 feet container uh, if you really want at least that's roughly the volume that you would need that includes uh, transformers usually as well uh, and here we have some examples of vessels these are not by the way your typical fishing vessels and are a lot bigger but then um, at least you can have a look at uh, what such a system would look like but um, here you see uh, some examples and case studies uh, to get a more feel on what you would need moving on to biofuels because that one's interesting um, at the moment we do not have a lot of options for biofuels we simply use biodiesel and bio hfo so that also needs to be improved in the future what we do is we have an additional premium cost in this case for hvo so that's uh, biodiesel you could say hydro treated uh, vegetable oil and uh, usually that's about 50 percent, but it can be a bit more let's see it's 60 80% uh, increase and uh, then we get price parity roughly with all the different uh, measures that we have but um, as you can see if we change the premium that we need to pay for uh, the biodiesel in this case again 50% it means that we pay about 50% of uh, extra cost for H HVO that's that's an okay price I'd say usually it's more around 80 or 100% extra and uh, you can see that your day rate is uh, increased quite a lot but funny funny uh, the good stuff is that we can simply blend these uh, regular fuels with the amount of uh, reduction that we need. So we can reduce the amount of CO2 reduction to roughly concur with what we need. So let's say here 16 or 15. Yeah, we need about 15% reduction in order to achieve our target. And then you see that we have, well, don't pay a lot of extra. Uh, we still have, if we want to have 15% reduction and including these two co2 reductions uh, into the mix 
uh, then we still need let's say co2 reduction on certificate with 75 percent reduction on the hvo we need about a 14 percent blend in order to achieve our uh, target reduction here is more information on uh, the hvo that we use and this one is uh, one of the best sources uh, that i know of at the moment and that's a summary of the renewable diesel handbook by neste you can download that one here it's quite a long read let's see there we go and this one's from uh, neste of course uh, it's about 30 blah blah 71 pages so well we're not going to read that but anyways um if you're interested uh, you can read more about uh, biodiesel here if you want, you can also compare some technologies. Uh, we have the different technologies listed. Uh, so that's uh, your fuel used, biofuels, uh, the resulting biofuel mix that you have, ammonia, methanol, full electric and hydrogen. We leave full electric out in mo uh, because, uh, well, the volumetric energy density of batteries is uh, not great. Uh, also not terrible. No, it's actually terrible if you compare it to the operational profile that you want to have. So usually uh, you need a very specific operational profile or something else to really get the, uh, everything out of uh, full electric uh, propulsion. And hydrogen as well, usually quite a lot of volume is required in order to in order to have the same operational profile. But you can also do a weight comparison. Let's see, you know, we have a weight comparison and then you have a lot of extra benefits from hydrogen because, well, it's the, uh, in terms of uh, uh, energy to mass ratio, it's uh, simply the best. And finally, some of the emission factors that we have used for these calculations and they can be changed in the, the premium version. Wow, it is a lot. So uh, we have now shore power, battery hybrid and biofuels tweaked to our preference. Then we go to our payback. Oh my God. So uh, we're never going to get this back on time. Uh, so I, this is something we don't like to see. Uh, this means our investment in year one is never recuperated properly unless we do some uh, financial sh shenanigans like increasing our net present value. Uh, that being said, we can improve our business case and in the future we will also add uh, leasing and uh, other types of uh, financing here to tweak them even further. But suppose we have a very high carbon tax, then we see that things become interesting. So in this case, uh, with a carbon tax of 300 euros per metric tons of CO2, which I do see feasible, but not in a very short notice, short, well, I don't know, nobody really can prepare for that kind of future. But uh, let's keep it uh, fun. So here we have, uh, well, let's keep it even funner. Um, getting a payback of about five years with 400 euros per metric ton. Uh, and in case we have no, um, I'll put it to zero, yeah. In case uh, fishing is fully exempt from all EU ETS regulations, then at, well, we're simply paying a lot of, a lot of money uh, for nothing. So most of it, this, uh, most of it comes of course from the uh, battery hybrid. So let's quickly shut it off for the moment. No battery hybrid comes available again. So oh, that's better. Yeah, that's better. And if we add some more, boom. Okay, so uh, battery hybrid is the culprit here. Uh, we're just gonna leave it in for the fun of it. Yeah. All right, uh, net present value, for most of us, not economics. Um, does really matter, but uh, here you can change around to see how net present value uh, rates impact your, uh, impact your business case. We can also change around uh, fuel parameters, but we've already done that, so we're not going to dive deeper into it. Uh, capex breakdown, here we get an overall capex breakdown of the entire, all, all the different technologies. And as you can see, we only include uh, equipment procurement. If you want to add design refit and class cost here, then you see, well, for battery hybrid, most of it is simply the battery itself, which is uh, most expensive. One million for a two megawatt hour battery. Yeah, that seems about right, unfortunately. It's expensive, it's bloody expensive. So um, we're just gonna leave the uh, design refit and class cost out for the moment. For most cases, uh, we simply wanna get an equipment uh, breakdown. Uh, we'll see it in a report later on how that looks. Uh, we also have a OPEX breakdown at the end, so you can compare before and after how much uh, you would save for each different aspect. And that of course is, is the beauty of battery hybrid. Usually you save a lot of engine maintenance, uh, consumable cost, that's most that's where you get most of the benefits from, not necessarily uh, fuel consumption reduction. And the carbon tax, even though that's uh, not required, it's also not included at the moment, that will be uh, available soon. So we've done step one, two, three, four. Now let's go on to step 
five, pressing the PDF button. I'll enter my email here, sustainable ships. And then we should be able to press the button. That's it, moving on. Once you've pressed click, uh, the report itself will take about 10 minutes to generate. So after 15 minutes, you haven't received anything. Feel free to contact the help desk. That being said, the report is a lot. Luckily, we discussed most of it already. Uh, you can view it as more or less a repository of everything that you have put in. And we will see that it is merely an instance of all the information. Um, so basically, we really have to sit down with you specifically. And the tool provides more worthful information than the report itself, because the report is just a one-time thing. As soon as fuel prices change, everything's changed. But then again, it is a very nice overview of everything that you might need going ahead in the future. And you can also use it to contact suppliers. So let's show you what you can expect. So here's the uh, premium reporting, as you can see for the Jacob Maria, uh, everything is in here. And again, oh man, it's so much information and also here we have these great decreases in day rate. So we actually save a lot of money. And in the end, we have five years payback on our investments. But we already know for a fact that these are very heavily dependent on EU ETS carbon taxes, which at this point in time, we do not even know if fishing vessels will be applied to. In any case, it's a very nice uh, overview of all the different technologies. Here you can see everything that we have mostly discussed. So the operational profile, key upcoming rules and regulations, all the technical details for the technologies. I wanted to um, mostly stop at the CAPEX breakdown because that's most useful in this report that we do not have in the tool itself, not yet. And the appendix is merely uh, looking up information when needed and some more case studies might be interesting to you as well. So here we have all the disclaimers that we have discussed, a summary of the vessel information, uh, more on the OPEX itself. This also been discussed, some very beautiful graphs on the operational profiles uh, in general, and also the daily operational profiles when needed. Here we have all the rules and regulations that apply and a few of the most important timelines. And as we can see, if we really have to adhere to these timelines, we have, uh, well, not very long. In, with the Jacob Maria left. So in any case, here we selected only the ports. And then again, if you click on uh, which one's best, well, I like Marseille. If we click on that one, there you can see we have uh, more information available on the port itself. That's also a, a nice way to have all the information. Carbon reduction measures, more information. And here we go, technical details for shore power. Well, we have seen this table before. This is nothing more than uh, the table that we uh, adjusted slightly in order to uh, customize it for our case uh, more of the well more of the same pictures simply the same pictures um, so this is all discussed including battery hybrid with some links biofuel with the according links and here things get interesting so what we did was for each technology we made a breakdown of six different aspects including design and engineering for supplier ship owner the equipment procurement and then execution retrofitting commissioning class and certification right now we assumed zero euros for the design engineering class etc we know that's false but uh, this gives us a very good uh, breakdown of the equipment costs only uh, which is in a lot of cases very handy we have still included here the amount of hours that we expect to use or that that are used for each different steps and this is simply, uh, well, now it's zero, but we multiply normally with your internal rate in order to get a better estimate of the required investment. From the supplier, from the ship owner, here we have a breakdown of the equipment uh, that's required for procurement uh, for, well, it's still uh, based on a lot of assumptions, but in the premium version, we can dive into detail about what exactly you need, the amount of meters required, cable trays, if you really need these amounts of spare parts or consumables on board, etc., etc. So, uh, also a breakdown of the expected required time for execution. This, of course, I've spoken to a few ship owners about this one, and uh, estimates vary wildly. It has to do with either uh, either with both complexity and uh, ship type. So this is really something that we um, have to look into detail too. 
But we do the same for uh, all the different uh, technologies. So also for uh, battery hybrid, um, has some similarities, of course, with uh, shore power. So also there, there is synergy that we have not yet uh, explored properly. And as you can see, uh, most of the cost here are simply the battery system, 800,000. Uh, we have assumed 400 euros per kilowatt hours for a battery system, which is bottom price, I'd say 500 euros per kilowatt hours would be more in line with uh, current uh, commercial prices. Um, same applies to biofuels, except for biofuels, well, pff, we don't really include at large table because basically that's uh, for most vessels, simply a few fittings, uh, gaskets, etc. That's uh, I've never heard anything more than, uh, than that, but I, I've been wrong many times, so I can be wrong here as well. And a breakdown of the OPEX cost that we have also seen before. And in this beautiful scenario, actually save a lot of money uh, per day, which is, uh, I don't think it's very fair because most of it is in the uh, ETS cost. There we go, we save uh, quite some ETS cost, even though we could save more, but still. We have some suppliers that you can go to uh, for uh, a few of the technologies. Uh, we are upgrading uh, these technologies and suppliers so that you can get more contact in the future. And the rest is simply all extra to read up upon in this case doesn't really apply to you and we have some case studies in the end to give you further information on usually vessel specifics um, here we have some on methanol and, and regulations for maritime sustainability as well feel free to simply go to the uh, web page and see or read up upon all the information that you would like and that concludes our decarbonization case study on the jacobus maria a large fishing trawler vessel operating in northwestern Europe. It was a lot of fun. It was the first time they actually did three different types of technologies and uh, we are still improving a lot on uh, what we can offer you and hopefully we can do a lot more in the future. However, if you have any questions at the moment, feel free to contact the help desk. We are always on standby to answer you with marine maritime sustainability questions. That's it for now and have a great day. Thank you.